This stent expansion seems really, really weird. We see the top and bottom ends of the stent expanding way more than the central region. This is called the duck boning effect. Do you know you can quantify this effect precisely? In this video, I will show you how to do so after running the Abaco simulation of the stent. Make sure you stick around to the end where I also show you graphically how this effect can also be demonstrated. Let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. So as we start, there are five steps that we're going to use in generating this dog boning effect. The first is the theory of the dog boning effect. Then the second is setting up the model in Abacus for the stain simulation. Then the third step is to define the reference nodal points to use for tracking this dog boning effect. Then step four is how to extract this dog boning effect from Abacus and then finally based on the results from Abacus I will show you how to plot this dog boning effect graphically. Now this is the stent that we're going to use and this is a longitudinal view and this is the view from the side and one thing to distinguish here is the points that are defined here as red dots so right at the top here we've got those points which correspond to this point at the top and these are called the proximal or the top reference nodes we're going to use that to track what dog boning effect we see in the specimen at the bottom we have a similar kind of thing which i've described here as the distal or the bottom reference nodes and then right in the middle we'll also have a set of points like that which are called the central or the middle reference nodes now to look more closely on that each of these reference points are labeled as node 1 and node 2 with their coordinate positions attached to them so we have the xyz coordinate position to them because with those coordinate position we can determine the diameter of this proximal end and this is calculated using euclidean norm for that point which is something that is written like this now in the middle we'll do the same kind of thing have node 3 and node 4 find the diameter in the middle again using the Euclidean norm and then we'll do the same finally at the distal end find a similar diameter as well now these three variables the diameters of the proximal middle and distal will be used to quantify the dog boning effect of the specimen now there are three stages to this deformation the first stage is the unexpanded state where we reference and find the diameter of the unexpanded then the second stage is when the material is fully expanded the balloon is touching the stents so again we find the diameter in this fully expanded state so admittedly we are no more seeing a concentric expansion of the stent due to the fact that you've got this dog pulling effect happening on the sample and then when you take away the pressure or the displacement on the balloon it recalls back and in the recall state the balloon completely detaches from the stent leaving the stent in this recall state and it's really held in place because of the plastic deformation associated with this deformation and so we need to also note what this recalled diameter would be for this stent and based on this recall diameter we can then work out what is going on in the sample the kinematics of the stent diameter is really a measure of how the diameter is changing with time during that deformation and it's really important to know this because with that we can quantify this dog boning effect so the first diameter that we need to reference is the unexpanded diameter which is the diameter at time zero and then the next diameter is a fully expanded diameter which is a maximum diameter in the stent and this is usually at around 0.45 and then when you take away the effect of the balloon then you end up with the diameter in the recall state which is the last stages of this deformation now to look more closely in the expanded state the dog boning effect is calculated at the expanded state and so this dog boning effect where the extremities of the stent is showing a vastly different expansion compared to what's happening in the middle and this is this dog boning effect that we're talking about so at the proximal end we calculate the diameter in the proximal at the distal end we'll calculate the diameter in the distal end again we're doing this using those nodal reference points that we indicated at the beginning and then in the middle we'll also find the diameter in the middle and those information are then taken into a quantitative calculation of the dog boning effect using this formula again this formula is the dog boning effect in the expanded state so we're only playing with variables that are in the expanded state so one of them will be the diameter in the proximal which is the top 
minus diameter in the middle of the specimen divided by diameter in the proximal times 100%. So this gives us an objective quantitative measure of this dark burning effect. So it will be a number telling us what's going on with this tent in terms of the dark burning effect. The reference literature that we're going to be using for this will be a publication of mine. Again, if you want to read a bit more, please do dig up this paper and read. If you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And please leave me a comment in the comment section of what you think about this whole modeling philosophy. You know, do you actually use the dog burning effect in your stent modeling? And how are you using some of these videos that I'm making on stent? I'd like to know. Or if you have any question about videos you want me to make, please do let me know in the comment section. Thank you. So let's now go into Abacus as we begin this modeling. So this is a stent model and already properly designed and we're going to start off with this so the first thing we need to do is that if we go on to the part modules i've never this thing strange stent and under the parts module so we've got the stent itself and the balloon as well so within the stent itself so what you will notice here is that there are all these reference nodes so i already have this four identity these three identified so this already been specified initially right at the beginning so we're going to use that for our setup and if I switch that to the meshing module, so you could see all of them because they were set up in the meshing module. So this is what we're going to do. So right away, the first thing, how do you create this? So just to demonstrate how you create this. So if you double click on that, so I could say maybe, maybe this is the top ref point. So something like that. And we could, in this case, it's quite clear. We can pick it up easily from this geometry module so we could just okay let, let me set this up in this face so i could say okay i leave it in geometry module and i pick this and then press down shift and select this other point and then click done so this is how you specify the top ref point and then we'll do the same for the bottom ref point so so still in that geometry module so we just pick the one at the end press down shift and pick the other one at the other end and that is that so this is fine now with the middle it's a bit difficult to find what's happening in the middle so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create the partition to indicate where the central point will be in the middle here so i'm going to use this option so you press here and click this which says create datum point between two points so i'll just select the top end here and the bottom end here so that creates a middle so i'll select the top end here and the bottom end here that creates also in the middle so at least i now know where that point is so what i need to then do next is to find the reference point that indicates that so let's just switch this to let's say material model so that there's clarity in what we're trying to do so what what do we do so i go back to the measure module the measure module because i want to pick this up as in the mesh module so i could call this the mid ref point now i switch it to a type which is a node so the left ones i'll just zoom in to find exactly where that point is so i'll pick that and press down shift so and zoom out and then come back here and zoom the other point still while pressing down shift i'll select that so if i go back to the full view so you can see they are all now selected and clicked on so what this basically is telling us is that we have this reference point mid ref and bottom ref clearly isolated and we're going to use that to track our behavior so i'm just going to delete them because we have already i've already specified the point that we need previously so we're going to use all those three so that's the first thing we've specified the nodal points then the next thing we now need to do is to create the history output so under history output double click on here so i could call my top and then now as a set i'm looking at the top ref and then what am i tracking so i'm tracking only coordinate one coordinate two and coordinate three so this is the x y and z coordinate positions during the deformation so we do that for the top ref and then you repeat that for the medium ref and the bottom reference point so i've already set those up previously so i'm going to delete that now that's all really you need to do the remainder of how you set up the model you can look at the video that i made and then you submit the job to run this is a result from the simulation and then just to kind of I trade through the result quickly so you see what's happening here so this is the sort of deformation you get from from the stent so it, it shows a strange response like we expected so if we look at the side view so there is the differential deformation at the end compared to the middle now the next step here is how do we actually extract these variables so we go to this history output now within the history output we know that at the top end we have those two so again it's clearly indicated here as the top 
so we again go there and go there so these are the top reference nodes and we're working with that so we plot that so once you plot that it gives you this expression this value and showing what's going on in the results so we go to plugin tools excel utility current plot so what i'm trying to do is to export this data into excel so that i can use that to do some further manipulation in an excel sheet of what's happening in the model so this is the result that you generate when you export this into excel so already here this is the time column this is the x data another time column and then the x data so what i'm going to do is to take away all the time columns so i only have one time column in the data leaving all the other ones in place so i'll select all that control a to select and control c to copy so this excel sheet that we're going to use to do this analysis this excel sheet will be available for you to use in the description section of this video please do check the link and then download it so what i'm going to do here is just to paste that data so just look more closely on this data so this is a time axis which will be the same for all of them and then this is the x value the y value coordinate position and the z coordinate positions and then i've gone, gone on to calculate the diameter of the stent and there's a, a longish equation that kind of helps you determine that and so that's the graph and that data is what we see exactly here showing all the different values in terms of x and z for this case so now again what is the direction of reference so our direction of the x analysis here is in the y-axis okay so in the y-axis so we select y-axis which is the longitudinal axis so this tends to orient the longitudinally and based on that it will then update to calculate all the other variables so it's a doubling effect we're analyzing node one and node two which are the top reference nodes are specified here now the first thing it will calculate is the original diameter which is diameter at the start of the specimen which is two then the expanded diameter obviously is the largest diameter here and then the recall diameter is specified and then it goes on to calculate the dog burning effect so if we look here on the kinematics of the stent so it shows the result that is generated as diameter is changing with time and then there's a calculation that shows you how this is calculated the dog burning effect now i'll go and do the same for the middle so how do we go that so we go back to our history variable and then now in the middle so which is this so select those select those and select those so that already is attached the middle reference notes so we already know that so we plot that again we'll export that into an excel file so this is the cell sheet and we're dealing with the central or the middle case so we'll just go ahead and paste for the central case and we put in the values that we generate for node 3919 and 4014 again the values are generated so we we'll do the same for the distal case and again we we'll get the numbers that we we'll generate from the simulation so these are the the sort of result that we will generate from this so the, the next thing is how do we actually calculate this dog burning effect so clearly remember what we are doing with the dog burning effect is if you look at the formula we got here so it's saying that the maximum expanded diameter in the in the top minus the central middle maximum value and how is that generated so it goes on to the next slide the next sheet here and what we are saying we are calculating it from this case okay so in the central case we determine that value and then at the proximal case we use that divided by the maximum and that gives us about 30 percent so clearly with the middle it will give us zero percent we are comparing the maximum displacement in the middle with the maximum displacement in the middle which obviously is the same so it gives us zero percent so we're not going to worry about the center we're simply putting the center here as a reference to help us determine the diameter in the middle and then in the distal region we do the same so again the distal region is the maximum displacement our expanded diameter at the bottom end which is the distal region minus that of the central region divided by what you get at the bottom end here so that gives us again as we see here 31.12 percent so i'll take all that data and put together in a comparison plot so this is a comparison plot that shows us what is happening and really what is important here is the proximal and the distal, va distal values because that's how you quantify dog burning what's happening at the top and the middle and then we find that the numbers are sort of somehow close and the quantitative data are also specified here and then the kinematics of the stent formation put together for the proximal and distal region are also specified here and it does really give us some interesting data of what is happening here so if you want to learn a little bit more about how to 
again generate such structural parameters as elastic recall this is the video for you or maybe longitudinal retraction this is also the video for you to use but thank you for interest in this video if you're not subscribed please do subscribe so that when contents like this are made you will also be the first to see thank you and i'll see you in the next video bye bye